Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about AWS Amplify. That tool allows us to create somehow like Firebase a fantastic backend as a service with a different tools with for deployment, for development and for anything else. And we want to take a look into it, what service it is providing already and how we can use it in Flutter. AWS Amplify is an AWS service that means it runs on the AWS cloud. And this is already the first very large difference between Firebase and AWS Amplify, because both of them are backend as a service. So what is an a backend as a service? It does all the heavy lifting for us that we usually do in our backend. For example, authentication, it takes care of storage, data storage, also possible is that you have the possibility to make push notifications. So with all these in mind, you can create a whole backend that your client, if it is web, desktop or mobile, can use. So the Flutter SDK for Amplify has been released this year and I just wanted to take a quick look how far it is already. Don't forget, this is an alpha version, so it is very early in the production, so you shouldn't use it in production mode quite yet because a lot of things can still change in the API for Flutter Amplify, just to keep that in mind. Okay, but why you should even consider Amplify over Firebase? Because Firebase already offers you all the services. First of all, if your company is working a lot with AWS, they would be very happy if they can still stay in the same ecosystem. So that's already a huge benefit, right? If you know already AWS and Amplify, you can use all the services and smarts that you have there without having a concern to change to Firebase. Another very big important addition here is the Amplify CLI. And the Amplify CLI has some very interesting features for us that we want to take a look into. For example, we can configure our Amplify uh, storage directly from the CLI locally and push our changes to the Amplify cloud. Also, if we have made changes in the cloud, we can just pull the changes and have them locally. Additionally, we have the possibility to create code for us, for example, all the configurations and stuff will be done via the CLI. Also what's possible is to create models for us in Amplify. So all these benefits are in this Amplify CLI, which makes it quite special. But before we jump now right away into the tutorial, please check out up there the video from my friends from Fireship, who created a fantastic comparison between Firebase and Amplify or AWS services. They go into detail, but not for Flutter, so I would like to cover that part. So if you are interested how to implement the stuff in Flutter, let's stay here and we do it together. All right, so let's start. What can the app do for us that I create as a demo today? So here you can see our blocks app for today. We are able to register our account. Now we get a little snack bar with registration complete. We receive now a confirmation code, as you hear. Now here in the email, we can see the confirmation code that AWS Amplify sent it to us. So I can enter that here. We press confirmation, as you see, confirmation completed and we got logged in. Now we are able to create our first block title with our post title. And if we press now add block, we have a block created with our image and text. If we go back, we have the possibility to log out and log in again. So that's it, what we want to create today. That is data store and authentication of AWS Amplify. In the beginning of the video, in the introduction, I told you already that Amplify is actually a container for multiple services. So for example, the authentication is done with Cognito and this is this service here. So you can see that there are tons and tons of services in AWS Cloud that you can use and Amplify works as a wrapper and helps us to manage that easier. All right, if you start with the installing of Amplify, you will come to this page, install the Amplify CLI. You will find all the links down in the video description. Here you have three options. First, NPM installation, curl with Mac and Linux, and curl with Windows. Choose what is for you preferable and use that. In my opinion, I use at the moment curl for Mac and Linux. I go into a terminal and execute this bash shell. So what happens if we install Amplify CLI? This will take a second. All right, please make sure to have administration rights on your computer or use sudo command if you cannot install the Amplify CLI like I did now. 
So now I can check if the Amplify CLI is installed by just executing Amplify. And as you see now, we get all the commands that we can execute within Amplify. Fantastic, with that, the CLI is already installed and we are able to use it. So let's clear that out. And the next point starts with our Flutter project. For you, you can just create a new one or take our project that we created with the tutorial branch. To begin with, we want to go to the Amplify tutorial folder where you have your project, your Flutter project. As you can see, this is now our demo folder where I am currently in the tutorial branch. And here inside, we want to be in a terminal. Now we can say Amplify in it. And here we get now asked a couple of questions, like for example, a name, the dev environment, which default editor we use, so the IDE, I choose here Android Studio, which framework we use, which is Flutter, and where do we want to save our configuration files? And I just keep that in lib. So it will take now a second and asks you to authenticate with AWS. We use the AWS profile. And as you see now, we get some information here. We choose default, and as you see now, it initialize our project in the cloud. So what does that mean? It will push now the information to the AWS cloud and creates there an own project. We will see that in a second. So now you can see your project has been successfully initialized and connected to the cloud. If you cannot do that, you should call first Amplify uh, Configure, where you have to configure your user account in the AWS cloud, which I already did and I'm logged in. So for that, I can see now my AWS Amplify project. As you can see, we have created already quite some, but the Amplify tutorial is the newest one. And if I join here, we can see that the deployment is completed today with the time. So that happened thanks to the Amplify CLI. I will click now here on Setup Admin UI just to make us the life a little bit easier and press here Enabled. With that, we get now an Amplify Admin UI where we can configure our backend in the cloud very easily. We can see that in a second. So now that we have the Admin UI enabled, now we have the possibility to go back to our project up here in all apps and press on Open Admin UI. Now we jump right into the Amplify admin view where we have the possibility to set up everything. Like for example, we can manage our data model. We could also set up our view edit app content where we create content for our app and enable the authentication, which we want to start now. So we could now do everything here inside in this admin UI. Everything is possible here. Okay, because we executed uh, Amplify Configure, we can now see here that uh, we have to change some stuff. First, I press Enter because I'm already logged in. Now I choose the region. For me, this is Europe Central, but you can choose whatever you like. You can specify a username that you want to give to an uh, admin access for Amplify. I just take this one and you get redirected to another page from AWS where you want to create a programmatically accessible user. So I just keep the username here, we just say further, and you choose administration access, and you just say further, and here it just asks you for a key, we can just skip that, and what you can see is once more everything that you have created. So if you now uh, create this user, we have the possibility to get this access key or access ID. Sorry that it is in German, but it's the same thing. And you will get asked here, if we press now enter, for the access key ID, which is that one on the left side here. And then we have the secret um, access key, which we want to access here. So if you edit both of them, we have also the profile name. And now we successfully created a new user for this Amplify account. So if the further step or the step before didn't work for you, now it should work. So if you want to do it now, Amplify in it should now work. In my opinion, I would like to add now the authentication. So Amplify add auth. And as you can see, you get some questions asked again, like default configuration. We want to use the email address. Do you want to make additional settings? I say no to that. And with a second, we are finished here and we just say Amplify Push. And what happens now is thanks to your um, authenticated user, it creates this authentication service directly in AWS for you. So this update will take again a second. We see us in a sec. 
While this is working, you can see here that deplo deployment status in the cloud has changed to provisioning app backend. That means it got an update from the Amplify CLI to the cloud. So after some seconds, we finally managed it and all resources are updated in the cloud. That means if we join now here back again, you can see the deployment is complete. And if we open up the admin console once more, we will see now that here at the authentication part, the stuff is deployed. So we can view our authentication settings. Interesting enough, Amplify don't allows you to manage all the authentication possibilities that you possibly have. So if you are in the admin UI, you probably will not see all configuration possibilities that AWS Cloud delivers you. If you now manage to go back and jump here into actions, view detail, you can see up here the authentication part. And what's very interesting here is view incognito. Behind the scenes, instead of turning on the authentication in Amplify, you're actually using the Cognito um, service of AWS. And here you can see a lot more different configurations that you can do. So keep that in mind if you are working with Amplify, that Amplify is always just the wrapper. All right, but what actually happened now locally on your client in the meantime? We created an Amplify project. That means we initialized Amplify. So you get an Amplify configuration. And if you click in this file, Amplify configuration, you will see already that we have a user agent, version, authentication, credentials, plugins, and so forth and so forth. And all this stuff is directly managed with Amplify. Also, what you will see is the Amplify folder. And inside of the Amplify folder, you have the backend, you have a config and all that stuff is created for you in order to work with Amplify. So you don't have to take the heavy lifting of configure Amplify yourself. Everything is done for you directly inside of your project. That brings me to a very important point of Amplify. Amplify at the moment works only with version 11 in iOS, which you can see here, and with the version of Min SDK of 21 in Android. So keep that in mind. You have to update for that the pod file and the Xcode to, in order to work with these versions. So in order to update that, the first solution is to go to the pod file and here inside you uncomment the first line and change that to the version that you want. I update that now for iOS into the level 13. The next step is we have to set the deployment level for the Xcode. For that we say right click on the project, press flutter and open the iOS module in Xcode. As you can see, Xcode is opening up. And here in the runner, we can find the project runner. You can define in info the iOS deployment target. For me, this is already 13. For you, this is probably nine. So you have to upgrade this one at least to level 13. Additionally, I found an issue in Amplify on GitHub that told me that I had to update inside of the post install installer this section here. So please make sure if the build runner is not working for you in iOS that you add this part here. Okay, now to finally start with the implementation of the authentication without everything in the configuration, let's start at our favorite place, the pubspec.yaml. We have to add, of course, a dependency, which is the Amplify Out Cognito. As you can see here, the version number is lower than one, which means at the moment 0.10. Again, the warning, this is everything in very unstable alpha releases. So that means at the moment, I wouldn't recommend you to really use Amplify in a production ready Flutter app. Besides of Outcognito, we will also need the Amplify Flutter dependency. So let me add this one too. Now we do pub.get and receive our latest dependencies. Now that we have the latest dependencies and are ready for production work, we can now go into our main.dart. Okay, in our main.dart, we want to configure Amplify. I already created there some possibilities. So one option is the widgets, flutter bindings, ensure initialized. And after that, we configure Amplify. For that, here we have several to-dos. The data store will come next when we want to save and store data on our client and on the server side. But for now, let's begin with adding Amplify Auth Cognito. So let's start by initializing Amplify Out Cognito, 
creating a new element. Uh, this is the auth plugin. Uh, we have to import amplify, configure, and here inside we want to pass in the auth plugin. All right, so now we want to configure amplify. For that we call amplify dot add plugin. And here inside, we want now to have the Amplify Auth Cognito, Cognito, and initialize that. Perfect. Because we want to have multiple plugins later, I already changed the method to plugins and pass a list inside and with the first um, plugin. Now we can remove that. We can remove this with the Auth Cognito. The next step is to configure Amplify itself. So for that, we want to have a try catch phase here. And inside of this try phase, because it is not allowed to configure Amplify twice, we want to do it with a try catch. And if we try to um, configure it twice, it should throw an error. Make sure to check out this GitHub issue. In the GitHub issue, I already figured out uh, at the moment, there is a problem with the hot reload. So in the hot reload, we try to configure it twice and we throw an error and with that Amplify gets stuck. All right, so now we call Amplify Configure. And in this configuration, we want to use the Amplify Config. If you ask now where this Amplify Config comes from, this is inside your Amplify Configuration.dart. And all these configurations are now passed inside of this Amplify Configure. I will also, uh, inside of this catch phrase, I just want to catch it with the print amplify is already configured. Fantastic. As always, I was a little bit res relentless. And as you can see, this is already a future, but we don't really wait for something. We have to await the configuration part here because this configuration returns a future and takes a second to be finished. If we jump now to our block screen that you can find, and it was the first page that we showed you, this one, then you will find these three buttons. For each button, I created a function that is called onPressed, which is first login, register account, and confirm sign up. All of them have to be done, and we want to implement them now one by one. We will start with the register account because we don't have an account yet on our cloud. While we are working here on our Amplify project, it would be fantastic if you could hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, because that supports us as always, and it would be fantastic to see you more often around here. Thank you for joining, and now let's go back to our code. I have already prepared here something. So as you can see, we take the Amplify out, call sign up, pass inside the email and the password, which are just hard-coded emails and password at the moment, and this part here is quite interesting. When we are signing up into the Amplify Auth, we have to pass in currently a Cognito signup options. This Cognito signup options contains the user attributes, which is a list of um, strings to strings. We have to pass in the email twice because the username in our case is also the email. That could change if we want to, if we set up the Cognito a bit different, then the username could be a username and the email is a de-email. We could pass inside of these user attributes also a phone number, profile picture, and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. The Cognito signup options are mandatory to sign up a user. All right, in order to test now if this registration has worked, let's jump to our application or let's start up our application and press the button. All right, now we have here our app. And if I press register, we get the information register complete. But what does that mean actually? Let's have a look inside of the admin UI. So if we are on the admin UI and navigate to user management, here we will find now our email address, when we created the email and the status, which is at the moment unconfirmed. And as you heard maybe already, I got again a verification email. So if we check the box here, we got a verification email with the verification number. And this is the second part that we have to implement. By the way, if you want to get rid of this verification process here, I was not able to do it. If you are able to do it, please let me know down in the comments below. All right, so to confirm our sign up, 
we go to our editor to confirm sign up method where we have the to do. Also here I prepared already something. And as you can see, we call here the confirm sign up method. We pass in the username, which is in our case, the email address. Don't forget that. The confirmation code, which is the code that the user gets sent via an email, which we will add into our app. So if we go into our simulator, the confirmation code that we enter here will be this number. And then we just, if this is successful, we log in and that should show the confirmation complete message. Of course, this confirmation sign up returns us something. The sign up result result. And with this result, we can now check if the result is sign up complete, then we log in else we don't do it. And the same thing belongs for the scaffold, um, scaffold messenger to show the confirmation. All right, with that, we have now the possibility to confirm our sign up. Let's check out if this works. So I opened up our inbox where we see the latest verification number and we have the confirmation code. So let's enter that one and press confirmation. We can see logged in successful, but something didn't work out well. So what I want to do is checking the AWS part. So even though we didn't get the result that we wanted, that we are logged in, we can see that our status of our email is now confirmed. With that, we are able to log in with our password and username. All right, we are now able to register, confirm our registration and log in. But the last thing is missing, logout, which is pretty easy. So let's search for logout. And in this case, we want to await that Amplify auth signs out. And actually, that's already it. Fantastic. All right, now we are able to manage our user controls. We can sign in, sign out, register, confirm. The next step would be to work with the data store. For that, we will use the API key that Amplify provides us directly, so we will not associate our account with the data store. In order to begin with the data store, we start again in the Amplify CLI. So let's execute Amplify add API. And with that, we have to get again a lot of different questions that we get asked. So we start with GraphQL. We call the API name exactly Amplify Tutorial. We will execute it via an API key. As I said, we will not connect them with the users. We won't give a description, but you can give here any description that you want, like Flutter explained API key. How long should that last? We will take 365 days, so long enough, I guess. So do you want to add additional configurations? No, we don't. Um, we don't have a GraphQL um, schema. And here we will get asked for a schema template. And surprise, surprise, there is already an option for blocks, posts and comments, which we will use here. So after some seconds, we get some more questions. Do you want to edit the schema now? I will say no, but you can say there yes if you want. Now we have everything managed and you get the next steps like for example Amplify Push and Amplify Publish. All right, but what did the Amplify CLI does for us? So it created us a new folder inside of Amplify backend API Amplify Tutorial and here inside we can find a different stuff but what we are interested in is Schema GraphQL. Here inside, you can see now our data model that we create for our um, admin UI or for our Amplify UI. So all of these different things are now existent, like a type of block, a post and a comment. And the block consists out of a name, which is a string, a post, which has ID, title, block ID and block, and a comment. So all of that is created for us directly from the Amplify CLI. In order to find now these changes also on the cloud, we have to call Amplify and now push again. And with that, we push our changes for this data model onto the cloud and we can see it then in the admin UI. Now, after we have released everything, we can see that there is now a created endpoint and API key. Both of them are very interesting, but they are already configured thanks to Amplify CLI in your project. If we head now over to our admin UI and check out the data or content stuff, it will tell you that we need to first deploy once more. So if you enable here the data store and deploy, we will go further with that. So let's do that. 
and just give it a second to deploy. So as I said, again, Amplify is a collection of different services. This time you can see that Amplify create and update the AWS AppSync endpoint and Amazon Dynam DynamoDB tables. If you are an expert in AWS, you will know them already, but what Amplify does, it creates us all the data management stores that we need in order to get ready to get our data storage usable. So after the second configuration happened, you can go to the data modeling or content. And the good thing is now you can directly see everything of your items here. So if you go to data, you can see your data models. You can see that it has a name, an ID and so on and so forth. The next step is to create models inside of our Flutter app. So thanks to the Amplify CLI, we can execute Amplify code gen models. And what does that do is it will create us the models for block, post and comment. So we don't have to take care of that. So as you can see, it's already run through. And if we make that now small, we will find a folder called models inside our lib. We find block, comment, model provider and post. The model provider is quite special because it takes any kind of model and defines how they work inside of our application. We will just use that once but we will see how it works. So we are back in our pubspec.yaml where we want to add the Amplify data store. So we can remove this and get started with pub.get. So now we have the dependency installed. In our main.dart, we have to configure Amplify. And here we have now to make sure that we initialize also our data store. So next step. All right, so now we need to initialize another plugin, the Amplify data store. Inside of the Amplify data store, we provide now the model provider that I told you about. So here inside model provider dot instance. Fantastic. So now this model data store needs to be part of the app plugins. And because that doesn't look that nice, we could create variables for that. For now, that should be fine. And we have registered our Amplify data store with the app auth cognito. And with that, the Amplify is configured correctly. All right, now let's have a look which tasks we have still open inside of our block screen. Number one would be here to import block as a list. And if we do that, we can import now the models from the model folder. If we take a look here inside, we can see they are equal to what we have seen in the GraphQL schema. So we have an ID, a name and posts, which is the reference to a post. If we take a look into post, we can see it extends also model. It is ID, title, block and a list of comments. And if we check the comments, we have ID, post and content. All right, with that, we have created the structure and you can see up here, this is auto generated. So we don't have to change anything here inside. What I usually do is make a right click on this models folder and mark this directory as excluded. So that Dart don't check these parts. Fantastic. All right, the next to do that we want to fix is this subscription part. I added here a quite some code, but what does that do is it just reacts on the different events that can happen on the data store. So it's observing it, which gets us a subscription and we listen to that. And this listener just takes the event that occurs and changes the block list or the list of blocks that we save in underscore blocks with the add type, with the update type or the delete type so that we see on as a reaction directly what happens in the list. So how do we do that? We just uncomment it, but you see there are stuffs still red, like subscription event, event type. In order to fix that, we have to import a specific data store plugin interface. And with that, we can see that these errors are getting removed. So I can remove this to do, and we are ready with this observe. The next part is the init blocks. So the first time when we load our app, we want to see the newest blocks and this happens here. So what we want to do is update our blocks with the newest things from Amplify. So we await for amplify.datastore. Now we query for the block.class type. And as you see, we pass in the class type of the block. And with that, we receive our blocks that we want to see. Fantastic. Of course, we don't will see anything yet because the blocks are currently empty locally. 
All right, but now let's create a block with a reference to a post or better, a post with a reference to a block. So for that, we have to create the first block. For that, we just use the class that we have and pass inside, for example, a name, which is our uh, block name that we have initialized as a block title inside up there on the state of the widget. The next part would be to create a post, which is a post class. The post contains two things. Number one, it will, we will have to import it. And then it contains a title, for example, that we can take, uh, where we take just the post title that we have also as a state up there. And we pass in the block and the block is just the block that we created beforehand. So I just renamed that to new block and that's it. All right, but how do we save the things now? We call again amplify data store. And here we say now save and we pass inside the post. And because we have to make a connection between post and block, we first have to save the block. Good. All of that has to be awaited for. And with that, we have saved the block and the post inside of the data store. Fantastic. So now in our application, actually, we get now a problem because list of dynamic is not subtype of list block. So let's restart our application completely to see if the stuff is working correctly. We will be back in a sec. All right, so here we are. We have our block title, which we can enter. We have our post title. And if we press add block, we get our input. As you see, we receive at the moment an exception. To be honest, I cannot tell you why this happens. I guess because I deleted the Amplify ones and it reinstalled, it, uh, reinstalled it. But if you take this error, there is currently an open GitHub issue for that. As I said, we are here still in a very early release of Amplify. So yeah, this can happen. But now with that, we are able to save our first block with our first post. And if we go further, we can remove that. This is for the sign out. And we check out for the delete command. Somewhere we have a delete, delete, fantastic. And here we can now amplify dot data store dot delete. And we want to pass in the block that we want to delete. So, and that's it already. So with that, we have already nearly every possibility ready. We have the creation and the deletion. As a challenge for you, try to implement the query and navigation to a blog post and show the title at the top as we did it at the beginning. And now head over to the other Macs to get some explanation on which one you should choose, Amplify or Firebase. Hmm. But now let me play a little bit fortune teller. After we have now talked a little bit about Amplify, how you can implement the crude elements, the authentication and so on. Now you will ask what is better, Firebase or Amplify? Well, it depends of course, but at the moment Amplify is not that mature like Firebase. Firebase gives you a lot of smarts, easy to implement, very easy to do. So if you have a new app with no precondition, I would recommend at the moment Firebase if you have the possibilities. Of course, this is also a de decision depending if you like the Google service cloud more than uh, AWS, Firebase is better and so on and so forth. But keep in mind, if you have already a project that works with Amplify as a web project for JavaScript or for another project, it is now easy to work with Flutter in that context. Of course, it has some children problems, but with the time it will overcome these and will be as good as Firebase. So I guess it heavily depends on your um, case and on your use case. All right, now you would be able to use the Amplify CLI. You understood how you can initialize your Amplify project and push and pull changes. Also, you understood how you can, uh, that Amplify is actually a collection of different AWS services and how you can use them. We made an authentication and some data storage things. Fantastic. Thank you for watching. Until the next time. See ya, guys.